All right, what we're gonna try to do today is make a crawfish trap. Now I've got a, uh, this is a wire mesh. I've seen them made out of plastic mesh, quarter inch. And honestly, they seem to be considerably easier to make. You don't need 10 snips and stuff like this. I've measured mine out to be 36 inches in diameter. Now I'm gonna have to make two sections because this is as wide as my mesh was. I had it for something else and now I'm doing this. So basically I've measured an end cap and its circumference was 38 inches. So I'm gonna take this mesh. Now it came out 36 inches and what I want is at least a two inch overlap so I can close it up and nothing will get out of the top or the bottom of it, depending on how it lays once it gets into the water. And this thing's about, that'll make it about 18 inches long, which, you know, should be sufficient to get a dozen or so, or maybe two dozen crawfish in there. You know, some are gonna be really small, you're gonna wanna throw them back, let them, let them mature. But now with this wire mesh, of course, you're gonna get stuck a couple of times. But you want about a two inch overlap, and being that this is quarter inch, it's easy to measure out. But what I planned on doing is taking this lid and putting it over one end. Let me get on the camera and uh, zoom this out so you can see what I'm looking at here. I don't know if you can see all of it there. All right, there we go. So I'll have the lid on top, and then I'll put the cone on the other end. That does actually look big enough. And with the mesh that I have, maybe I can make two or three and throw them in different areas. But basically, all you need now is uh, some zip ties, which I swear I brought them out here. And when you get to this point, you just overlap one over the other. Give yourself, you know, like I was saying, the two inch. And now, just like that, then you just go down the line, making sure everything is lined up. Then what I'll do is I'll put my lid down on the inside. Well, I didn't measure it like that, so it's going to have to go on the outside. And I will drill holes in this lid and run run the zip ties through there and attach the lid to the uh, to the cage but I think the biggest question that anybody would have I mean that looks pretty pretty simple the trick is making the cone for the crawfish to crawl in but can't get back out And I will work on that for a second or two and show you how it's done. Yeah, what I'm doing right now is uh, just finishing up, zipping up the sides to make a barrel. I'll uh, bring this in here closer so you can see the zip ties are in a zigzag formation.
on each side near the edge not right on the edge but pretty close to the edge and just zigzag your way all the way up to the top and it's not very difficult don't put your end on first you know you don't want to have each end closed up and then you have to go fiddling around inside this way you can reach in from both sides and I'm just trying to keep it straight and uniform and then just throw a zip tie down in between the mesh and then with this open end you can it's easier to reach in and come up come up through the other side and then just you know as zip ties work and make sure everybody's using them I happen to have a pair of tin snips here because I'm working with wire. And everything's lining up pretty good. And you, you don't necessarily have to put a whole bunch in there. Just whatever you feel comfortable with. Making it secure. Because like I said, I did do a two inch overlap. So when the crawfish get in there, they can't climb out of a seam where you didn't put it together real well. See where I've been using this wire to start with it didn't come out even but this will be the end that I put the cone in so it's really not going to matter the end that needs to be closed up nice and tight is this end which I'm going to put this lid in there and like I said I'll just I'll drill holes through it about every I don't know three inches drill a hole run a zip tie through it and then that'll secure that and as you can see it'll I measured it out pretty pretty good where it'll sit just like that. I can even drill water holes in here. You know, that way if uh, smaller minnows get in there, you know, bait fish, shad, that they'll be able to get out. But I don't want my bait falling out. And there's plenty of baits out there you can use. You can use uh, wet dog food, hot dogs, you know, go go to one of your your local stores and just get the cheapest pack of hot dogs you can find something that you would never consider eating and I mean take the whole pack and throw them in there I'd start out to see if you got a good spot I put maybe three or four of those hot dogs in there and then if you know your spots good then you can go in and start really baiting it and like I said with the wire mesh that I've got you know you're, everybody's heard that saying don't put all your eggs in one basket well that is definitely true especially when it comes to fishing and fish traps you want to spread them around also with snares the more you have the better your chances of catching something to eat and this is just you know not basic And you got to think about this one a little bit. This is not a basic snare or something like that. If you're in survival mode, this is what I would consider prepping mode. You know, you've got the time. God knows you got the time right now. Since we're in the middle of this coronavirus. And people aren't, you know, they're really not paying attention. You know, they, they think it's a joke. Well... This one's not a joke, folks. And I would, I'm considering this as a, as a really good training exercise. Because I do actually think we'll get through this one. But it should be a wake-up call for a lot of people. They can see how fast that things can go south real quick. Now, deciding where I'm gonna drill the holes and how I'm gonna run the zip ties. I can go in from the top, but I've got a couple of lips where I can come in at an angle from the sides, and I think that may work better. I'm just gonna have to try to. Like I said, I'm using some, you know, some very small, very, very cheap zip ties, 
and I don't know how UV is going to play on them, or you know, this is this is galvanized wire mesh. It should hold up fairly well. I know using these white ones on this white lid probably not going to show it real well. But that did pretty good. And like I said, I'll probably just go every three inches. So I space it out around this thing. I'm about to scoot around this side. This is a lid off a five gallon bucket I just happen to have laying around. I'm not trying to get too fancy and you know just keep in your uh, always stay in your scavenging mode. You know, I already used what was in that bucket and I use that bucket now for water collection and just keep working your way around. I don't know how you, how you folks feel about eating crawfish, but I love them. But, they're also great fish bait. So, you can use them either way. Nice autumn day here, the first of April. No, I will not be throwing out any April Fool's jokes. April Fool's is not a funny day for me. It's the day they told me I had leukemia. And today is my 10 year anniversary. So you see I'm making the best of it doing what I like to do. Now, the all-important inlet. On the business end of this trap. You want the crawfish to get in, but you don't want them to get out. That's right here. Basically what you gotta do is make it. Now, if we take a rectangle and start here at the bottom and roll it up. Where is it going to cover and leave enough gap? So you're gonna lose that much. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it where this end gets clipped up here at the top, but most of the ones I've seen are right in the center, and I haven't worked that out yet, but I'm sure all of us together can figure it out. I need to cut me off the next piece of wire. I have to close the top like this and then put a small cone right in the center. I think that's exactly what I'll do. Should have done is 
found two lids. But I'm in a hurry. tie that all up and that'll be completely enclosed and it might be easier because I said I was going to put my clean out in the other end I may cut a bigger hole and just put the cone in that end and just take the cone out and reach in and get everything so I'll use the wire to close this end up that's what I'll do it but I have changed my clothes this is day two it started getting a little dark last night and I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to run out of light now we're talking about the inlet to let the crawfish in what I've done I've just taken a little rectangular piece and just started rolling it this way And it doesn't have to be very large, but you roll it around, you get it closed up, something like that. I can get about two fingers in there. Most of the crawfish that I've seen aren't much bigger than that. I might open it up a little bit, but you definitely don't want them, once they get in, you don't want them getting back out. So you do that. Go ahead and get your cone made and take a zip tie and lock it in place. Just another helpful hint with these zip ties. Once you're working in something you can't get your hands in and out of very easily, take it and put a little curve in it. That way when you stick it in, it'll kind of automatically want to try to come back out. Go ahead and pull your locking mechanism down close. It'll just make it easier on you when you're trying to feed it. Once you get one end secure, it'll be easier to, to start working with it. And then you gotta trim it up so it'll sit flat on the top there. And once I figure out how big the hole needs to be, I'll start cutting that out. All right. Now we got to come around till we get a perfect circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just saying so it'll sit like this, and that's going to go down in there quite a long way, which I'm not crazy about. But where these two ends meet right here, you just want to run a piece of tape around there to show you some type of cut line that you're going to have to make and just leave that one piece in there for right now all right basically what i have just a just a sharpie and where these two ends meet i want to do a circle now i've seen a lot of them just go straight in but i'm going to decide that there's going to be a bottom to this trap so once you set it in the water it's automatically going to be there and i'm going to angle this up a little bit so they come in, drop down, and then they got to try to climb back up to get out. I just think they'll stay in there better. We'll see. And I mean, a lot of you guys out there, I am always open to suggestions. But let me trim some of this off now. All right, so there's our cone, and that's relatively level and that's you I mean it's good enough for this i mean it, we're not talking about perfection we're just talking about something that's going to catch crawfish and we're zip 
because just to make sure this thing is secure. Because once it's in there and there's crawfish in there, bass love crawfish. They love pretty much anything that don't eat them. Get us another zip tie in there. Now, right now, when it's, you know, I mean, I understand, you know, we're in the middle of a little pandemic here, and I don't know how bad it's going to get. This is, like I said, this is April, so we'll see. And now what I need to do is cut a hole in this one and set this straight down in there so it sits about like that. And I may even trim this thing up some more where it's not so deep into the trap. So what I will do for right now, just to mark it, just a little guide where it's you know, relatively round. Come through there and snip that off. There we go. Now let's work that down in there. Let it get in there pretty deep. Like I said, go ahead and go ahead and jam it down in there. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then you got to come here and cut this off so once they get there they can figure out how to get the rest of the way in there and just go around the top and mark it then you'll know where to cut it off and like i said this is this is actually my first one so there's gonna be some trial and errors and if yours doesn't come out exactly like this don't worry about it You'll be fine. It needs an inlet. It needs food. And I've heard people use, you know, uh, wet dog food, cat food. But once you make your first ones, you know, maybe write down some notes in case you're planning on making another one. And this is going to be a volume one and a volume two because I am going to make one out of the nylon mesh to show you guys how that works. And I'll be honest with you, it's the nylon ones are substantially easier. But if you already have this gauge wire definitely use it don't waste it there we go I just secure that with some zip ties and it should be good to go Now this is the part I was talking about curling these up because if you don't curl them up once you start closing this thing up you will not be able to get your hand back in there.
And there you have it. Now, what I was talking about, keeping it up at an angle. They got to drop in. They got to figure out how to get over here. They may get confused and not, not be able to get out. But they come in right here. You put your bait in there. Tie you a nice sturdy piece of rope to it. Bank line might work, but you want it. Let them climb up and then drop down in there. And there's a, these things work great. And the crawfish shouldn't be able to get out of it. I still have to make a door down here to clean out. Because I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take about half of this. I'm gonna leave some in there for, you know, being sturdy, but go down like this to the edge and come back up. And what I'll do is I'll cut this here and leave this side attached. And then I'll put a zip tie in there, something I can, so I can, so I can open it up and close it and then be able to zip tie it closed back in again where they can't get out. I may not even use the mesh, but be very pretty using this big old knife. I should have grabbed one of my, like a box cutter or something like that. There we go. I do need to put me a finger hole in there so I can pull it up or pull it back or I knew it was going to be that. There we go. Like I said, it acts like a door. Then you can reach in there, hold it up, dump them out. But you definitely need a way to keep it closed. And there's a couple of ways to do that. I could have put mesh across the top or pull the mesh this way and then open the door this way. But what I think I'll do is I will put me a hole in there and maybe just put a carabiner in there. You know, those, those dollar, dollar aluminum ones so I always have something to be able to grab onto. I got one sitting right here. Throw me a hole in there. Put this carabiner in there, and then that way I've got a way to, to pop it open. Now, what you don't want to do is hook it in there, one inside, one outside. You want to do it right here so you can close it flush. So you need to put two holes in there and fish your carabiner through it.
there we go. And that that'll allow me to pick it up and hold it back and dump everything out. And then I can always take one zip tie and put through that extra hole that I didn't need and keep everything closed up. When I get ready to dip, dump it out, the little gap in there, anything that's small enough to get out of that gap, you probably don't need anyway. That's it. All done. Ready to go catch some crawfish.